Savior, Jesus Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ, first of all. Happy Father's Day to all fathers here and those who play or act in the position of fathers in children's lives. It's good to meet in our Father's house together on Father's Day. text for today is from our gospel lesson from Matthew. It's a continuation of the instructions that Jesus was uh, giving to his apostles as he is sending them out, yet they are still here for us. And you might notice that a lot of the lessons after you know, started with Pentecost and going forward talk a lot about our lives as disciples of Jesus. In the church and what you can expect and what Jesus tells us today that we should expect is not bouncing off the walls happy joyous and free if you're expecting that if you're expecting an emotional high you're expecting to be just have every good thing in the world a beautiful house, a beautiful spouse, big car, mansion, boat, a peaceful, easy going life. That's not Christianity. What does Jesus tell us, his church, that we can expect for following him? A brother will betray his brother to death and a father's child. Children will turn against their parents and kill them. And everyone will hate you because of my name. Your family will hate you. Everyone, the world will hate you. And they will go after you. Just make sure that it's because you are obeying Jesus and not being a jerk. Because as our sinful flesh comes back to act this way, we may be self righteous and go, well, they're going to be mean because I'm a Christian. Well, not necessarily. We're being mean to you because you're being mean to them. St. Peter tells us live such good lives among the pagans that they may be ashamed of how they treated you. Before the Father in heaven. So if you are holding fast to Jesus, if you are trusting that he is the sole, only reason you get to go to heaven, that his life, death, and resurrection and ascension are the only reason that God loves you, forgives you, and calls you to be his own. And people hate you because of that. Good. You should expect that. I'll be paying attention to the headlines. You know, we, we, we have a little trouble here and there in America. I don't want to downplay that because... It is a foretaste of what is to come. But you and I have brothers and sisters in Christ across the world, and you know, Nigeria right now, I think something over 60 million Christians have been killed by Muslims there in the last decade. Not only that, but they have been raped, they have been sold into slavery. They have been tortured. Expect the same. Expect it. Pray that it doesn't happen. But expect it. Someone may say, well, I don't know if that's weird being a Christian. <laughs> you know, I mean, if I can expect people to hate me and to seek my life and to torture me, so in slavery, do other kind of horrible, cruel things, and it maybe eventually even put me to death if I'm lucky. Is it worth it? Well, Jesus tells you, you don't count the cost. Count the cost. You are following him. Is it worth it? 
through it. But what does Jesus tell us? Despite all this, be faithful to the end and you will be saved. Be faithful to the end. That's the message Jesus also tells us in Revelation when he's speaking to the churches. You know, he, he gets on their case for having these problems and these other problems. He says, be faithful. Endure to the end. Then he lists these different promises of things that we will have to look forward to. Having our names written in heaven. Having received a new name. Being a, a pillar and a temple of God. Being seated on God's very throne. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Because whatever we're undergoing in this life is only temporary. It does not last forever. This too shall pass. It's not going to be easy sometimes. This could be pretty difficult. Yes, even for Christians in America, there are going to become times where it's going to be, are you going to be faithful to Jesus and obey him? Or will you listen to the world? Will you be faithful to Jesus and keep yourself sexually pure? Or will you give in to temptation? Will you give in to the acting out of whoever is pursuing you? Will you do what you're supposed to at your work? Or will you follow what your boss says in bad books? Or don't put that entry in. It's a question of your faith. Are you going to obey Jesus or obey your boss? There's all kinds of things that come up in our life that they're, they're the decision points. We're going to be faithful to Jesus, trust Him, and then do the right thing Will we give it to the world because it's simply easier? I don't have to put up with it. I don't have to deal with all of it that I have to go through. If I decided, no, I'm going to do what's right because that's what Jesus would want me to do. I'm going to be holy because that's what Jesus wants me to do because my Father in heaven wants me to be holy. Are we going to do what's right? Are we going to do what's easy? Those are the types of persecutions we were meant to go on this thing. You also may be called nasty names and have all kinds of things hurled at you which are not true about Christianity. You just think it's easier just to say forget it. Don't. Endure to the end. You will be saved. Remember, in your baptism, you have been made one with Jesus. And Jesus tells us, a pupil isn't above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. A pupil should be satisfied to share his teacher's life, and his slave to share in his master. So the master was called above yells above, how much more certain members of his household. The Jews that opposed Jesus should have said, oh, he's He's casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. They, they had a kangaroo court for a war. They beat him, pummeled him, spit on him, ridiculed him, brought him to another court. But they did more of the same. And ultimately, they crucified him. You're a disciple of Jesus. Expect it. Don't lash out at people. And they do lash out at you. Jesus didn't lash out at people that lashed out at him. He endured it patiently, knowing what was to come, knowing why he was doing it. And St. Paul tells us to, to love our enemies, to pray for them. One vengeance, turn it over to God. Say, God, you take care of them. It's not in our hands. We'll be lied about, slandered, arrested, persecuted, tortured, killed. It happens all the time. Even now, all over the world, particularly in places 
look at India, China, Asia, and in other little ways. Maybe not quite as drastic here in other places that once were mostly Christian. Jesus tells us, don't be afraid of me. Expect this, so don't be afraid. These things are going to happen. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. God knows. Your heavenly Father knows. And he allows it. He may even set it up for all you know. Because he has bigger plans. No, I don't know about God's going to let me. God's going to let all this horrible stuff happen to me. Why should I follow him? But he did to Jesus, his very own son. What? Do you think you're better? to his father who sacrificed him for you. Don't be afraid of following Christ. Don't be afraid of those who cause you trouble because you follow Jesus. The worst they can do is kill the body. They cannot kill the soul. Jesus says, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That would be God. Have the proper fear of him. And that means trust Jesus no matter what. Never give up your faith in him. Never give up your faith in his promise and what he has done for you and what he plans on doing for you when he returns. What he's going to give you that lasts forever. The things we lose in this life and the things we go through this life are just pass. What our Father does in His judgment is forever. So what kind of Father do we have that lets this stuff kind of happen to us? Well, He says, "One two sparrows sold for a cent, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your Father's permission. Even the hairs in your head are counted. For something that's easier for us. But he knows where those hairs are, so don't worry. God cares for you. Father in heaven cares for you so much. He just sits there and he has nothing better to do all day than sit there and count the number of your hairs. That's how much he cares. He doesn't let a sparrow die. Apart from his will. How much more of you? You. He says, don't be afraid again. You're worth more than many sparrows. How much are you worth? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus on the cross. Remember what God did to him there for you. How he made him suffer. How he allowed him to be ridiculed. Be and ultimately taste death, which was yours. As Paul said earlier, the wages of sin is death. And that death of your sins, Jesus tasted on the cross, so you would never have to taste that death. Be faithful to Jesus, he tells us. Whoever confesses me before men, I will confess before my Father in heaven. Whoever denies me before others, him I will deny before my Father in heaven. So be faithful to Jesus. Boldly confess your faith in him. Do not be timid concerning his name. Don't be afraid to have that name, Christian, on your side. Only to others that you believe Jesus is God's Son. That He is the Savior of the world. That He is their Savior. I don't need to tell you anything. Jesus is your Savior. He died for your sins. I forgive you for His sake. Just as 
This says, as we boldly confess him, he will confess us before our Father in heaven. He will call out your name, present you to his Father. He says, this one's mine. This one was faithful to me. No matter what came their way, they did not deny me, Father. They're your children. And woe, woe, woe to you if you think it's just not worth it. If you ultimately say, you know, everything that God has really happened to my life, if there is a God out there, you know, Everything Jesus is allowing to happen in my life and all these horrible things that happen to me. It's just not worth it. Look at this. He will deny you. Oh, heaven, Father in heaven. Jesus says, never time. They will not. We more saying, let us in. You will say, I never knew you. But we, we healed in your name and we, we, we exercised demons in your name and we did this and that in your name. Go away from me, all you wicked doers. I don't know you. What a horrible thing that will be confessed among those who denied Christ when the moment demanded it. Don't be denied. For your own. It's okay, it's coming. You might think, oh, Pastor, what are we going through as Christians here in America? Is not that bad? Be like those other places. Yeah, well, I never thought we'd have gay marriage legalized either. Who knew? Gene, you were right. <laughs> this was that 10 years ago. States were never, well, yeah, the states were never allowed, but the Britain was free for Well, you say Christians will never undergo that kind of persecution here. My dear friends, you can wake up tomorrow and everything will change in a moment. Just like that. Just like that. I'm sure you thought a lot of stuff that's happened today would never happen. Change is just like that. Don't think you can't. Be prepared. When you come up for the Lord's Supper today, take Christ's body and blood, knowing that that precious gift will give you the strength. Say yes to Jesus and no to the world. It will give you the strength to confess him before men, no matter what they do to you. Knowing that the very body and blood that you are partaking right now, that is seated the Father in heaven, the right hand of God, that that is where you're going to be. And it will preserve you to that, to boldly confess it, no matter what happens. Now you will take it then. Every your baptism, there your baptism, you are united with Christ, wherever he is, there he comes, it's there you will be. And that will give you the strength to remember, to believe, and confess what Jesus says to you. You're not, not yours. Good deal. You don't have to do anything to earn it. You have to get this. You have to go sell all kinds of stuff. He offers it to you freely in Christ Jesus. It's a gift of salvation. Don't let go of it. For it is the most precious thing in the world and in the world to come. It's the one thing you're going to carry with you, no matter what. No matter what. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just a reminder that after the offertory, we will not be to come from the